We are over halfway through our Sonic Boom series in After Effects and the Boris Effects suite. I'm Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and it's time to make our sound waves fancy. My first port of call when I want to experiment with new looks is always the Sapphire plugin filters. And let's see how we can begin to transform these basic shapes into something more boomy. Okay, so the third bit is now to create our wave distortions. And I'm going to do this on a separate layer for a number of different reasons. Uh, the main one is, is probably just flexibility because I want to use these a few times. So I'm going to create a new solid. I will call this one sound waves. I make sure this is the comp size, hit OK. And I'm going to copy my particles. So copy. I'm also going to disable these ones on the main video layer because I'm going to come up to my sound waves now and I'm going to paste those in. There we go. Uh, I could, yeah, we'll probably just use a, a, a screen blend mode because they're, they're on black, so that's fine. We do have options within Particle Illusion to, you know, do different ways of compositing these. Because these are sort of white on black background, screen works for now. I'm going to say for now because we're going to do other stuff that's going to stop it from working. But this is what we've got. So the next uh, task ahead of us is to make these sound waves look a bit more interesting and a bit more fun. But let's just solo those out, shall we? And up till now, we've, we've mainly been looking at the continuum filters. And now's the time to start looking at Sapphire. And Sapphire have a lot of different filters for doing this type of work. Whenever I get sort of in a kind of creative rut, I'll always immediately pop to either the stylize or the distort categories to just kind of figure, figure something out from there. And I want to create some, some sort of interesting uh, colors over the top of this. And I'm going to use an effect called Psycho Stripes. And this is an effect that people look at and they just go, wait, what? 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 You do? What? What? Because <laughs> this is um, a, uh, a, number, a number of stripes over our, uh, our clip. It's kind of, kind of fun and interesting. And, you know, based off of the, the, the luminance values that we've got, it's creating these, these different sort of warps of, of color. And this is what I mean when I said that when we were dealing with the white particles on top of a black background, everything was absolutely fine. All of a sudden, now we're not dealing with white onto to black. So I actually do want the, the alpha channel from those particles. So I want that transparency from the particles. And that's easy to get. Uh, if I come into uh, my particle illusion and I come into com uh, composite, I can then take this away from being uh, the direct mode, which directly composites my particles on top of the layer to being alpha plus apply mode. So this gives me an alpha channel and I can do this on both of them. And the apply mode on the second one has to be screen so that they composite uh, together. But if we look at the transparency on that, you can see they do, they do still keep their, their transparency. Okay, so now let's take a look at what Psycho Striped is doing. It might make a little bit more sense. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of after a sort of, um, almost like a soap bubble effect. Kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking, I'm sort of almost liking the, the default values. I'm, I will stick with the default values for now and I'll, I'll change them up if I feel we need to. So we've, we've got a bit of color in our, uh, in our particles. Happy with that. Right. Psycho stripes. Great. The next effect I want to do is to, this gives a little bit of distortion. I also want to extend these back a little bit because at the moment, because of the way we've, we've got the particles set up, we've got an, an idea, a feeling of kind of 3d, but I, a, a sort of 3d tunnel, but I want to kind of expand on that a little bit and make it, you know, just, just feel a little, little bit more than it, than it is right now. So we've just got these concentric rings. I want to bring those together. So that's, that's a job for, for time. Now we could use something like feedback, which echoes things with, with 
you know, time and space, but I'm going to use feedback bubble. And the reason for that is because it's going to echo stuff back in time and space, but it's also going to give us this nice bubbly type of, uh, uh, of effect. And that's the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to change the, the bubble amount. So I want this quite sort of low. And whether we go positive or, or negative on it, I don't really mind. And we want a sort of fairly, actually we'll keep the, the frequency pretty much where it is as well. Uh, I can change my, my speed offset just a little bit. So we do get some sort of uh, change from frame to frame. Uh, and we'll, we'll just leave the rest of it there. So essentially what uh, it's gonna do is it's gonna come to another frame and then it's going to repeat the previous frames with some small changes that we say. And the default values are just gonna have it slightly further back in, in space. So we've got the Z distance of 0 0.95, whereas the new one's gonna come in at one. So this one just pushes it a little bit further back in space. I'm happy with that. We could even rotate it a little bit, but because of the way that we've got the motion tracking and everything, that's not gonna, that's not gonna look very good. So, so far, so good. The final thing to think about this is how it's going to combine those together. We can do an average. We can screen that over the top. We can do a max. I'll put this back to average for, for a moment and we'll see why soon. Um, and I can also come in and change the, you know, the previous brightness as well. So this is, this is how long it takes to kind of fade back. Now, the way these combine together is over a number of frames. So when we're just parked on a single frame in the middle of the clip, we're actually not getting a good idea about what really is, is going on. So if I set this to screen, this frame doesn't look very fun anymore. And that's because we haven't played through the other frames that it needs to, to build everything up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my show transform show center. And I'm gonna do one other thing before I, before I do a RAM preview going to go to home and I'm going to clear my RAM cache. In fact, I'm going to purge all memory and disk cache. This will ask me if I want to delete everything from my disk cache. Yes, I do. So this is going to be, you know, fresh territory now. And let's RAM preview that. And this is starting to build up nicely with the, the psycho stripes as well. So it gives us a sort of very smoky sort of fade. I, I'm liking that so far. Okay. The only thing I'd, I'm, I'm still not hundred percent sold on is the fact that our like original sound waves are still so tight. They're still so clean. Um, so let's, let's add one final, final one on top of here. Uh, let's come back to distort really is one of my favorite categories for Sapphire, Sapphire distort. And let's choose something warpy. So we've got wave warps and wave warps too. That's pretty nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with my bubble theme. I'm going to go with the, uh, the uh, warp bubble too. So sapphire warp bubble too. And let's change my amplitude up. I'm going to make these quite small because I don't want, you know, a huge, huge change. But I want us to be able to see it a little bit. So let's come in, bring the frequency up of both of those. I keep most of the stuff at default values, I think. Uh, and let's just round preview this. I'm going to show you what happens if I don't purge the, uh, the, the cache. It's just going to build from that frame. So we might see a, a, a kind of a, a, a jolt at that point. Am I liking that? I might, I'm quite liking that. I might bring the amplitude up just a little bit. Or at least the numbers up a little bit. Maybe the amplitude stays down at 0 0.05, but we bring the frequency up a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to like that. Let's have a look. And again, we can see that going through nice. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So let's see how that looks over the top of our video. 
So let's turn the solo button off on the sound waves and let's just preview that. I mean, you're not going to miss the effect, are you? I mean, that's, that's uh, pretty strong. Cool. All right. We're, we're getting somewhere. I'm, I'm happy with keeping it strong for now. And then we can start to, to tweak it down afterwards. But I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, yeah, liking where this is going. That's the end of part three of this series. Join me in the fourth and final part where we learn how to put everything together and make any sort of small changes we need to to get this effect working properly. Thanks for joining me for now. If you want to try this out on your own footage, then head on over to BorisEffects.com and download a free trial version of all the software you've seen here. You can also learn more about the Boris Effects suite and learn through the hours of free video tutorials of all of the Boris Effects products.